But there we are, that's a way of getting an edit out of EDIUS and into another program. I did it to resolve. It works with lots of different programs. You can do an AAF to Premiere, to Avid, and all sorts of things. The options you choose do depend on the program. So we talk about the Avid DNX HD plugin, that's an extra that you can buy for EDIUS. That's the one to use if you want to do an AAF to Avid, because most of the others don't work. If I was to go into Avid, and then try and import that AAF that I just made for Resolve. Okay, it opens it up. Let's open up the timeline. There's the timeline, but it hasn't linked to any of those clips. The red clips here, they mean they're all offline. So it's got the edit, but it's fluffed up the linking up to the clips. If you look up here, it hasn't imported any of those clips either. These are all the clips it's imported, but they're all offline. Why are they offline? That's because these are clips that Avid doesn't support. And the only thing that really works consistently with Avid is the DNX HD MXF plugin, which is why it's worth having if you're doing a lot of moving backwards and forwards to Avid. Another thing worth mentioning, if I come back to the AAF, is this list of types of files that you can make. Now, you might look at that list and say, okay, there's a lot of stuff in there. That's not every single format that EDIUS can make. If you go to the print to file, there are other formats which aren't listed there. So where's it get this list from? Where's it made all this lot up from? This is a list of all the presets that are in EDIUS. So if you want to add some kind of format into this, the thing you've got to do is to go into the print to file and make up a new preset. So for example, I'm going to go to Avid, and instead of using the HQ files, which didn't work, I'm going to try and make up some DNX HD QuickTime files. I can do that for free. I can download the Avid DNX codec and make up QuickTime files. But, looking at this list of stuff in the AF formats, there is no QuickTime DNX HD format. So how do I get it in the list? Okay, like I said, go to print to file and make up a preset. The way to make up a preset, obviously it's explained in our print to file section in the tutorial, but it's basically to choose the type that you want. I'm going to choose a QuickTime file, click on save, Call it something. So I'm going to make up one which is 1080-50i DNX HD. Go to settings on the video, change the codec, change it to DNX RGB levels, 1080-50i. Change the audio, which is just flipping annoying that it doesn't go to 48. Click on save, and now I've got a QuickTime DNX HD 50i preset. Now if I come back to AAF and go to my list here, I can choose QuickTime DNX HD as an option. So that's the way to get anything. You can get any kind of file into here just by making up a preset. I'm going to call this for Avid. Let it go through and remake the entire timeline into DNX HD mob files, and then I'm going to try loading that up into Avid and see what happens. If you're using a program like Premiere, Premiere is very good at loading up different types of file. It's almost as good as Eddie is. So mostly with Premiere, you can just link to the originals. It's other programs that have a problem, things like Avid, things like Resolve, where you have to be a bit pickier, and that's where you have to specify a file format. So there we are. I've now made some files up that Avid should be able to link to. I'm going to start up a new bin just to keep it tidy. I'm going to go import, choose my Avid AAF. It should link to those files and work. Well, there we are. It's brought it in. It's made a whole bunch of clips up. Let's look at the sequence and old oh, bottoms. The sequence is still all offline. If you look at all these clips here, they're all offline as well. Because unfortunately, when you're doing an AAF to Avid like that, it won't bring the clips in. The way it did in Resolve, it doesn't do that in Avid. I could manually bring them in. I'm going to do an AMA link, find those clips it's made up, select them all, and bring them all in. And now I'm going to try and relink that timeline to those clips, because those are the right clips. It should work, shouldn't it? So I'm going to choose the sequence. There's my sequence. I'm going to choose all the clips in the sequence, right-click on the sequence, and say relink. Let's relink to the items in the bins. 
click on OK and hope. Bottoms, it didn't work. Why didn't it work? Because it does that a lot, to be perfectly honest. I've had times when it has relinked. It depends on the clips. It depends on all sorts of things. A lot of the times it doesn't. And unfortunately, that's just what it does. That's why it's worth getting the Avid DNX HD plugin if you're doing a lot of going backwards and forwards between Avid. If I was going to something else, it lets me get out of Avid here. And let's try, let's try Premiere. Let's make up a new project. And let's try an AAF into Premiere. Oh, something's coming. Let's find the sequence inside of Premiere. And, wow, it worked. Gosh, it worked fine. The edits come in. It's even made me nice little trimmed versions and put them in a folder for me so it's all in one place. Well, that was fairly easy, wasn't it? And yeah, it is. It's a lot easier to go to Premiere or Vegas than it is to programs like Avid. Now, one setting I did gloss over quickly, and I just should go back and explain it properly, is this one, Legacy. I've been saying turn Legacy off. Legacy is basically what Edius used to do, um, and I found I get better results with Legacy off. I'm going to tick Legacy, and then I'm going to leave it as use original clips, and then export an ANF, and then bring that into Premiere. So here we are in Premiere with the legacy clips imported and you can see what happened is I don't have clips on other tracks. I basically just bring in the one track. Untick legacy, do exactly the same thing, come into Premiere and with no legacy ticks you can see what I've got is clips on lots of different tracks. And that's basically the difference. Legacy will do one track, no legacy will do lots of tracks. So that's why I like to tick no legacy so it does everything.